Hey, Reef Builders, and welcome to episode 67 of the Reef Therapy Podcast. My name is Remy, and as per usual, I'm joined by the OG reefer himself, Mr. Mark, and the owner of Reef Builders himself, Mr. Raj. Today, we're going to chat about Aqua Shell at Dallas. We're going to catch up on some uh, comments, and if we've got time, I wanted to chat about some grafted and or fused corals. Uh, the recent video that is up on the YouTube page has got a lot of people talking, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, Mark, what, what do you got tonight? What are you drinking? Uh, Sweetwater 420. Seems to be a popular classic Atlantean beer. How about you, Raj? I've got a Sweetwater beer, but it is the Highlight, their low-calorie IPA. You always Could have you know, like the... I need weird to... sweet waters that I've never heard of. <laughs> yeah. I need to branch Low out. Low calorie. Man. That can't taste good. It's not great. Not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> Bud Light did Bud Light Zero here, and they sent cases of that stuff to the radio station. Cases. Yeah. And it is awful. It is the worst. <laughs> and I actually still have two... 12 packs sitting on my desk at work and my co-host came in the other day and she was like you know that that beer that you've got on your desk it's it's been expired for a year nice <laughs> uh well, we don't Try ever go to our desk maybe it's better I I yeah right <laughs> fermented more. it's a little it's a little thicker it's uh got some some uh, strength to it uh, i'm on the water game tonight because i kind of felt a little weird this morning and i cannot be sick because my 11th wedding anniversary is tomorrow and we were just talking about Ooh. Uh, we're going downtown. We're going to go see the new soccer team that we have here, City SC, who are pretty good for an inaugural season. I think they went 5-0 and in their first uh, five games, um, which is awesome. And then we're going to do, do some stuff with some friends and just going to have a good weekend. Cardinals are out of town, so it should be pretty tame as far as downtown goes. It's so usually if it's the Cardinals or the Blues, downtown's nuts. and You can't go anywhere, but since we'll already be down there. I'm looking forward to it. Nice. Staying in a nice new hotel. Mm. It's going to be nice. So can't be sick for that. Get the champagne. Yeah. 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 11 years, baby. Yeah. That's right. Let's what, go. What, what is it? So the, the, there's some big mile S markers, right? What is it for? Steel. Steel. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. That's the traditional gift for the 11th anniversary. Excellent. We talked about this on the air. To signify strength. Oh. Uh, so you get her like a box of nails or something? something yeah. yeah it's good it'll be good yeah. it's in my budget <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> i can handle that uh let's start with you mark anything you want to talk about uh, off the bat any any tank related stuff going on at your place mm -hmm. I'm trying to think oh yeah i uh was ready to talk a lot of smack about my red <laughs> sea reef wave pump uh mm. it just you know the flow was like had diminished next to nothing so i went and like i took it apart i cleaned it i put it back in and the flow was still dismal and i was like this thing is a piece of shit and i was like cussing at it <laughs> and i went on premium aquatics and i ordered a new pump to replace it and then uh i don't know like i was i was fiddling with the controller and i had the uh, what do you call it? Like the the ballast, not the ballast. What do you call those? The driver. Yeah. Is that what they're driver. called? Yeah. You know, I have that like tucked behind a board. You know, trying to be all cool and hip and clean with my wiring, and that so that power disconnected from the controller that comes with the pump, and I was like, ah, shoot. So then I had to like take all of that cool, sexy, like hidden wiring apart to like get at it, which made me even more frustrated with the thing. And then I plugged it in and then it just went full throttle and like all my corals are like sideways, all my soft corals are sideways. I'm like, maybe it was just never, I mean, I'm not an electrical guy. So like maybe if you don't plug a driver in completely, like, you know, the pump just, you know, kind of trickles along half, half fast or something, or maybe it just needed a reboot, you know, like we are in the air where everything's cloud connected bluetooth whatever so maybe it just needed a hard reset with a power cycle so then i had to call premium and be like i need to cancel an order uh and they were really nice <laughs> about it of course but uh then i felt like an idiot you know so i was, I was ready to talk some smack and then i realized the uh, idiot was the operator you know like i was the problem so 
<laughs> that's their gyre pump. Right? Yeah, and I've had uh, yeah. gyres from Max Spect, you know, when they first came out, and those things were, you know, machines. They were beasts, and I liked them. So um, I had a Tunzi that wore. I think a, a piece went missing that kind of helped the impeller stay in place, like maybe a little rubber grommet or something, and I didn't notice. So it was a grinding away at the internal wall of the uh, <laughs> pump, but it was still dead silent. I mean, props to Tunzi, I guess. And it ran like that for a while, and then when I gave it a vinegar bath, uh, or sorry, citric acid bath, I noticed like it was like, oh, you know, that's eventually going to wear through the plastic, and bad things will happen. So I, you know, replaced that with the Reef Wave, and then I was very disappointed with its performance for a long time. And yeah, maybe just you know, needed either a better maybe just connection. Plug or, it in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it was flowing. It was just, you know, you could put your hand in front of it and you just feel like a little bit, you know, and I was like, this thing's terrible. Um, <laughs> so, so you're the guy that uh, tech support has to ask. Did well, you I mean, plug it in, sir. I thought, <laughs> you know, you tried we started pressing it? the on button. <laughs> well, no, I mean, in my defense, you know, I thought, you know, when you plug one of those LED driver ballasts in, you know, it's sort of all or nothing, right? It's sort of like plugging in a, a laptop. Um, so maybe that what I mean, in my defense, maybe it just was in a funky state. Cause I mean, I had the thing full throttle, like, you know, it's got a dial on there. I don't, I didn't like, I tried with the app and the app I didn't like. So I just started using the manual and I had it, I had it turned up all the freaking way. And I was like, this is it, you know? <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I've got an ice cap. Ice cap was absorbed by somebody, right? Coral view. Yeah, one of those ice cap. Yeah. Uh, well, ice, ice cap went out of business, pumps. and then Coral View just kind of uh, what was it like 10, Re 10 15 years later brought it, brought back the name. Yeah, ah, uh, gotcha. Weren't they just yeah. um, VHO ballast and metal halide ballast for the longest time? Yeah, yeah, they were doing lamps too, mm -hmm. um, and they were trying to expand out into other areas, uh, but their you know their big claim to fame were those. VHO ballast. What was it? Okay. The six sixty and four forty. Four thirty? Four forty? Yeah, which one of four something. They were like blue. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I and then they had the metal halide ballast, the blue ones like that. But you could those are the first ballasts where you could overdrive the lamps. Yeah. And then you could overdrive the T fives with those lamps too. Um or with those ballasts. Wasn't there an issue with those uh first E ballast for halides and like they would trip up uh GFCIs or something or there was yeah, some weird I, issue with them. I remember something like that but yeah yeah but I think the your standard ballast had a I don't know a bigger issue just because they were pulling more um immediate power I think the ice caps ramped up if I'm yeah. remembering correctly yeah, that was a long time ago <laughs> those those, those uh, magnetic ballasts were so loud. It was like yeah, like when you're in a parking hot. lot and the street lights turn on and you hear that hum. Yeah. That's like your yeah. that's your living room now. You know, it's just that hum. <laughs> I th I think I still have my ice cap ballast, like my halide uh, well, from my tank in college. Oh, that wow. ghetto rigged up tank in my apartment. I think I still have that ballast. I need to dig through one of those boxes and my wife yells at me about to throw away. <laughs> but it's, it's stuff I might need. Yeah. That meme. That, that could be a whole episode in and of itself. <laughs> yeah. As I was doing a lot of spring cleaning this today and I'm just, th there's this cabinet right down here that has like stuff I haven't opened, um, stuff I have opened that I'm just saving stuff. That's like 15 years old, you know, just tons and tons of stuff that needs to be gone through. But like you said, you, you, you know, you might need it someday when the power goes out or, you know, it's just you like that things. old power <laughs> adapter and cable box. I just went through a few months ago and cleared it all out. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm not going to use this stuff. I found stuff in there from like my Nintendo 64 and those, those connectors aren't even on TVs anymore. So yeah, yeah. I tossed a bunch of stuff. And then my kids wanted to play some game that was only available on, oh crap, I forget the name of the console, but it's not a new console. So I got on eBay and I got them that console and damn it, 
I threw away the, the cable. freaking connectors <laughs> and that box that would have worked. I was so pissed because then I had to go back on Amazon and order these damn things. Was it Sega? What was it? No, I think it was, um, man, I want to say it was a Nintendo, but. Super Nintendo? It wasn't Super. What was after that? Nintendo 64, I think. Yeah, it was N64, then there was the Cube, and I thought there was something else. Oh, the Cube. Yeah, there was the GameCube, and... God. Yeah, I forget. I don't know. I, forget. I, I wasn't remember. a huge gamer, but I did have... I did have those, you know, the the consoles. I feel like Nintendo 64 was probably one of the best with GoldenEye. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Spent so many hours playing that game. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Uh, definitely nostalgia. Uh, Raj, you got anything going on? I I feel like I've been with you the past I, couple weeks. So. I was about to say, I've been with you. We've been, <laughs> I haven't even seen my tank, so I've done absolutely zero. But yeah. I did get... Um, motivated by some of these uh, corals that we saw and um, except for man the one I wanted was what was it like four thousand dollars for a frag so mm. that's not gonna happen was it a mushroom no it was a it was an SPS and I, I don't remember top the shelf name. or was this uh I think it was uh yeah it was top shelf Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know they had they had some decent they actually at the frag swap or the at Aqua Shell, they had some decent sized frags. Yeah, the frag size wasn't bad. Um and it was Chunky. nicely encrusted and grown out, it had multiple branches. It was a it was a cool piece and the colors were just ridiculous. Um but you know, again it was four grand, not it's can't a lot. do it. It's yeah. A lot. yeah. Uh briefly I did a hey. water change. <laughs> <laughs> That's the lagoon. And then I also did a water change over here on the uh, NEM tank. That's the one with Uno and Dose and just that one NEM. And the thing is a monster. Now I just have to get to this one. I'm just going to do a, an easy water change tonight just to get some more, you know, uh, my I've run out of part, uh, two part. I've run out of everything. So uh, I need to... <laughs> We've been traveling so much, and there's been so much like video stuff going on. I've neglected most things, but I'm sure they, they're happy to see me, and I'm happy to see them now. Nice. So I like to say, that's is, one thing I'm not good. looking forward to is water changes again. Yeah. yeah. Maintenance and yeah, you know, nuisance algaes and things like that. Yeah. Uh, all the frags from the frag swap that I got here in St. Louis are doing well. The litho is going crazy right now. Hmm. Um, that one's, that one's growing really fast. Uh, I'm trying to think of the other ones, I guess. Um, the Duncans, of course, those are, are pretty easy to keep, but those are going, uh, pretty well. I didn't get anything at Aquashella, so, uh, what, what do Duncans go for these days? I think I got, I think in the video I paid $10 for a head, for a head or two, okay. I think so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, 10 years ago, that's a lot of money <laughs> for Duncan. <laughs> um, but everything's more expensive now. I so. remember when they first were, when they first kind of came out, um, they were expensive. Really, really expensive. I remember Julian writing about them because uh, it was at a time where we weren't getting Australian corals. And, you know, I remember he brought like a piece back and he was, you know, uh, giving it or growing it out and giving it to some friends. But uh, it was like that. You, you saw it in the book, and you're like, my fish store will never have that coral, you know? And then now they're they're everywhere, and there's different yeah. strains of them. Um, but, yeah, I, I didn't realize how many different kinds there were until I went to the studio, and there was just like... They're all green, but they're just, they're all different. Like some are like, you know, they grow into like a very ball shape and then other ones mm -hmm. have like longer, you know, uh, coralites, I guess. They're just like more branchy. Um, so they're cool corals. Yeah. They're easy too. They had, they had <clears throat> a frag at uh, Corner Reef, my local fish shop. And I was like, what is this coral? The, the uh, polyp the polyps on it were probably they're the length of a torch it was nuts i'd never seen it before and uh steve the owner was like yeah so just how you know just how the uh how, the, how we got them in, in the tank breakdown that we bought so uh i don't think those stuck around very long 
but I wonder if they held that or if it was just the, the you know the water chemistry or the lighting or something that made them do that in the tank that they were in. But I just thought that it was so wild to see it because it it literally it looked like a torch, <laughs> like very thin um, uh, torch. It was it was crazy. Nice. Hmm. Uh, so they can go, I guess, all over the place with those. But maybe it was a, a different strain entirely. Who knows? Um, but yeah, that was interesting. Let's talk about Aquashella really quick, right off the bat, because um, that's fresh in the mind. I know you weren't there, Mark, but uh, I guess you. from your perspective, did you see anything? Did you see anything on socials, or were you just totally uh, on a different planet? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it was my kid's birthday that weekend, and uh, you know, we were supposed to have family in town, but then they didn't come because uh, one of the relatives wasn't feeling too good. So, but you know, doesn't change the fact that we went into like mass cleaning mode, you know, because you. you want your house to be clean when your family comes to visit but so i didn't pay too much attention i saw some stuff on facebook i, I was jealous of the uh picture you guys took of the reef builders little dugout where you guys are all hanging out you know yeah. uh, i was like oh i want to be there you know um <laughs> but yeah looked like a good time yeah it was yeah it was good uh, a lot of people um we hung out quite a lot in the lounge which was good um you know, one of the things about those shows, you just you're you're up on your feet the whole time, Ugh. and just having somewhere to just to crash for a bit was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we'll we'll and you know, it's funny is when you have you know Mike Paletta and Sanjay and uh, Sarah Stevens and Chris Meckley and all these all these guys like sitting in the in that area with you. You had some fun conversations. I feel like that was probably the highlight for me. Having never really been around Mike or uh, Sanjay, and you know, having dinner with them and being able to just converse with those guys, and and Sarah from the Butterfly Pavilion in Denver, oh my gosh, like I could talk her ear off for hours, and I actually continued, and I I texted her after we were done, and I was like, so my kids, uh, <laughs> my my son has a worm farm now, and. Uh, where can I get some pupa that aren't painted lady butterflies? Cause that's like all you can find anywhere. Um, and we did those last summer. It was really cool. They send you the, you know, they send you the pupa and you, you know, they, they, uh, metamorph, they go through metamorphosis and then you let them go. And hopefully a bird doesn't swoop down and <laughs> eat them as, as you release them. Um, but, uh, I was looking for maybe a different, kind of butterfly or moth and i forget which uh which i think it's the um not the luna moth the sphinx moth mm. is they sell the um they sell the it wouldn't be a caterpillar what's, what's a moth uh they sell them at pet stores for you know lizard food essentially oh yeah and you can um yeah, yeah. They call them like tomato them. something or tobacco worms or like they're like these green things, right? Yeah, and they're super like the they're the cat the caterpillar is super colorful. Yeah, and they'll eat like uh, uh, tomato leaves, and I think they're um, they're like a pest on tobacco farms or something. Yeah, my daughter had a a, a bearded dragon for a, a bit, and then she got bored with it and. Then my wife and I were like, why are we taking care of a lizard that we <laughs> both don't want? So luckily there was like a reptile rescue place. And, you know, I was like, hey, do you know anybody that wants a bearded dragon? Like you can have everything. Like, and I mean, being a reef keeper, you know, I went all out on that thing, right? Like it had like <laughs> the best lighting. It had, you know, a four foot tank. Uh, it, but yeah, it was like, why are we doing this if she doesn't care anymore? But we used to get those. <laughs> caterpillars and they're not to be gross but when they would like nail into one of those it's like it's just full of fluid and it's just it was nasty man it was <laughs> yeah um yeah they look pretty uh pretty voluptuous yeah it was <laughs> a lot of fluid everywhere when that thing bit into one and just it's like uh so yeah the uh the larva the larvae are just they're yeah they're the, they're those big fat green uh looking things i don't know i'm pretty uh we might we might go to the pet store and just see if we can get one to to metamorphose metamorphosize into a, a moth i think it'd be pretty cool because cool. the sphinx moth looks pretty cool yeah. 
Uh, I know at the end of the day, it's still a moth, but like we talked about with the Luna moths, those things are beautiful as well. So, uh, yeah, so I've, I've been bending her ear about insect stuff because she's an invertebrate expert. And uh, we had some, we had just had some great conversations the entire time that we were at Aquashella. So I thought the media lounge was good. Like you said, Raj, well, I think we're going to tinker with some stuff for Daytona. Yep. Um, but uh, that was a lot of fun. And then we went to this, this is going to be, I, I wonder how this is going to be received, but to, a little bit of a spoiler alert. We went to a luxury watch place oh, geez. <laughs> in Dallas. <laughs> And they actually have a Red Sea reefer there, the 180. So they actually, in their like waiting area, they have a giant uh, Red Sea tank. And Marco, the owner, has always been into reef tanks. He's obviously a, a going through the place. He's a serial hobbyist, as he also has a bunch of RC planes. And there's a there's a racing motorcycle back there. Um, but uh, yeah, he's got this big tank. And I was under the impression that this thing was going to be just chock full of coral. And, you know, it's a luxury watch place. They got money there. And we get there and there's like, you know, a mushroom, some zoanthids. <laughs> he had just put uh, some cardinal fish in there and some clowns. And it was just, it's just a new tank. You yeah. know, it, it just screams, I'm new. And they're taking it slow, which is a good thing. Uh, but I know that they came then they came to Aquashella the next day. Uh, I said, you show me your most expensive watch and I'll show you the most expensive coral when you come to Aquashella the next day. Uh, and he showed us a watch that was one hundred and ninety five thousand dollars. <laughs> I was like, I don't know that I'm going to be able to top that. Uh, there's some pretty expensive coral over there, but I don't know if one hundred and ninety five thousand is going to do it. Uh, but, uh, we found a mushroom for 7,500. So that was as, as close as we got. And the thing was just tiny. It was, uh, it was the, I don't want to sell this price. <laughs> if you know what I mean? <laughs> I think he sold it though. Didn't he? I don't know. I, I think don't know. That's I, sold I, by the end of the show, man. Cause oh, it was... it's just so, it was so small. <laughs> it was so small. It was a mark. It was kind of like, a. Uh, the only way it was a it's a it's a disc uh, soma but it was like red and dark maroon kind of that like um what do they call those what do they call them? oh you like um, jawbreaker style like, or uh, yeah it's it, yeah, it was like eclectus, eclectus jawbreaker yeah. multiple colors in it um and then it had a splash of green which i think was the unique part of it um there was that one that Reef Builders at Jake did an article about back in the day that was insane. It was like this. The Purple Monster, I think, is what was it was. That it? Called. Yeah. Yeah. Watch that thing drift off somewhere in the tank. Because you know how mushrooms are. <laughs> like they just. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. But that, that was a cool visit, though. Even though the tank was new, it was fun. And then Marco came and hung out for a while, which was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they, that whole watch world is has always been fascinating to me. We've kind of touched on this before, but I feel like I'm a a wannabe watch collector, and I've got a couple different like vintage old you know pieces that are are fairly cheap. But these, I mean, these guys deal in Rolex and Omega and AP and Patek, and a lot of these watches are in the neighborhood of like you know average thirty to sixty five thousand dollars for a watch. Oof. Just uh. It's a, it's a pretty wild number, but you know, if you're, if you're super wealthy, you know, that's where a lot of, uh, that's where a lot of people put their money. You know, they hang it in a watch cause it, it, it'll eventually go up in value. And if you invested in watches before 2020, yeah. you probably made yourself a decent amount of money because they all went up yeah. by 30% in a lot of cases. I mean, a Submariner, the standard Rolex watch is 8,900 retail and they're going still for 13 to $14,000 on the gray market. So, yep. And you can't buy Almost them retail. Double. Yeah. 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 But that's know, the big issue. Even without that investment part of it or the speculation part, I mean, people have different vices. I mean, how much money do we actually put into our reef tanks? Yeah. You know, it ends up being a lot. 
and some people like watches instead. So, yeah, yeah. they don't die. They don't die. <laughs> well, that's true, right? You can pass one on to your kid. I mean, yeah, yeah it'll still run and everything. Um, I think the first Aquashella talk that I did, I started with a story of my grandfather's Omega Speedmaster that I sold on eBay uh, because I didn't know what it was. Ooh. And the hang tag on it said $225. And my grandfather saved everything. Uh, so you open up the box and the hang tag on it said 225 or 50 bucks or whatever it was. And so I was like, okay, this is a nothing watch. I'll, you couldn't see through oh. the crystal. Uh, it wasn't functioning. So I just, I threw it up on eBay. Um, and it got, I think it sold for $780. And I was like, what is happening right now? <laughs> Immediately got a call after it sold. The guy that bought it was like, Hey, you need to pack it this way. And I was like, what did I just sell? <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, come to find out that watch now functioning and in good condition isn't the most expensive. It's probably like 2700 to $3,500. So it's attainable at some point. Um, but uh, yeah, I, yeah. I want that watch back so bad now uh, because I made a, I messed up. I messed yeah, up. That hurts. Um, but I always tell that, that story in relation to all of the stories that every one of our corals has or most of our corals has, especially the ones that have been around in our tanks for a long time, like we kind of talked about in a previous episode. You know, what's your longest, uh, the, what's the coral you've had the longest or the fish you've had the longest? I mean, you know, you know about where you were in life, you know, what was kind of going on, how many babies it's, how many times it's, you know, propagated itself, if it's like a soft coral or something like that. Um, so I think that story, again, going back to story whether that be in watches or corals or whatever yeah that's the thing that connects us all so yeah uh, i i kind of started with that and then left everybody thinking well how, what's your what's your story gonna be and then i walked off <laughs> <laughs> almost as good as raj's talk at aqua oh uh, yeah this something time. like that <laughs> <laughs> where'd, you, so, where'd you talk about raj i talked about um mind hacking aquatics I, I took a, aquatic. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. Th thought I would tackle a different take on it and kind of just addressed our mental blocks, right? What the things that we do that hold us back or these natural behaviors and reactions that we have um, that end up screwing us up uh, or screwing up our tanks and just simple things that we have to unlearn or practice to not do or practice to do um you know so one of the things i always said that i'm i'm just i'm a lazy reefer right i don't like doing maintenance i'm not good at it it doesn't it's not enjoyable and i started thinking like why is that why am i bad at this and why don't i like doing it well i don't like doing it because i'm just not efficient at it and you know, it's, it's, it's a chore. Um, but when you want to get good at something, so I related it to sports, right? So if you want to be good at basketball, what do you do? You, you, you practice, yeah. you practice every day. You're going to practice for hours on and hours and you keep going until you get better. And then it becomes more enjoyable and you, it becomes second nature. You become efficient at it and, you know, you're, you're not just born a great basketball player and just like that. You're not born a great reefer. I mean, obviously some people just have this magic touch, but it's something that they worked on and they had a keen interest in. So they practiced it. They actually did all the things they did their water tests. They did the water changes. They changed their media. You know, they, they service their equipment, all these things that they do, these little tasks, it, leads to success in your tank and when you're maintaining things they don't break down um, and they work like they're supposed to and there's less work to do because you're not waiting until your tank is turned to shit or it's crashed and now you're panicking and you've got an overwhelming amount of work to do so just kind of pulled in uh, some of those things and broke it down made um I love analogies, so put in a lot of analogies to make it more relatable. And 
made fun of our friends whenever I got a chance to <laughs> make that relatable. <laughs> I think, uh, I think Guayulo took a bit of abuse, uh, quite a bit of abuse. And, uh, and then I think Sanjay took some shots at him too. So it was great. We were, <laughs> we ended up tag teaming him and <laughs> Joe looks at me and goes, why do I even show up? Just getting abused here. <laughs> Yeah. He was a ton of fun to hang out with. And I, 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 you had mentioned maybe we should go visit and I agree yeah. after watching some of his, uh, so at, in the booth, uh, in the reef builders media lounge, we had a bunch of tanks set up. There was, I think three or four freshwater, three or four saltwater and a reptile enclosure that actually had a scorpion in it, which was pretty cool. Unfortunately, we didn't see the scorpion all weekend because it just dug a hole and sat there. I'm sure it came out at night. Um, <laughs> But uh, Joe, and when in talking about his scape, I just I want to see his work on that twenty thousand gallon level. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, he just seems like a, he's a fun time at the party, but I think he's also probably a fun time to nerd out with at his aquarium. So I'd love to see oh, that. Oh yeah, definitely. And you know, took a lot of video of each one of our our personalities and people that were doing these uh, these tanks. So. Joe did one and I know he talked about why he's doing it or, you know, what he's doing and then being able to relate that working with a small, you know, a three foot tank versus that 20,000 gallon tank. That's going to be really yeah. interesting. Um, and I can't wait to, you know, Jeff Sensky actually did a saltwater scape. You know, the, those guys, um, Jeff and Mike are well known for their, for their freshwater and their hardscapes, but, they can do some mean saltwater scaping too. So that that reef, yeah. that reef was pretty phenomenal. I mean, to think that he, you know, whipped it together in what just a couple of hours. It's yeah, yeah. He knows how to talk. Yeah, he, do, he does. He does. <laughs> he does talk a lot. <laughs> he, uh, both of those guys do, but they're both great. Did uh, Did you happen to see the the video of? Uh, uh, I always get them confused. Jeff and Mike. Yeah. Mike Sensky throwing his hand in the saltwater mix yeah. and testing that. Did, Did you, you see, see that, that Mark? Mark? I saw it on Instagram, I think. <laughs> yeah. He stuck his finger in the water and guessed the salinity within a point. <laughs> <laughs> he said, it, uh, it's like 1027 might be a little higher than that, but I hope I'm wrong. And it was 1028. Yeah. It's crazy. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Was that just luck or like, does he really, no, I don't know. He did, he did two, he did two different tests and he was, he was dead on both of them. Yeah. What? One was low. Um, one was a lower salinity. So it's like, yeah, you need to bump this up. And I don't remember what the level on that was. It was a one, I don't know. Um, but then the one was like two seven. one or something. Yeah. 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 He, uh, it, it, I mean, people in the comment section, they corroborated. They said it, it, they've seen him do this before. This is a this is a thing that he does. So I don't know. I yeah. guess if you want to put that in your mouth, <laughs> <laughs> now, go for it. Watching <laughs> my the, cup of tea. <laughs> watching the fresh freshwater scapers was really interesting because we had a, we had a whole bunch of really really cool rock uh, and substrates and stuff from Carib Sea, and you know I didn't know they had as many different styles as they do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they had so many cool, <clears throat> cool things to choose from. And the way they approach their aquascape was very different. Um, just because the way that, uh, what the different, um, driftwoods, I'm going to call them the interplay with the rock. It was really interesting to watch that because I don't know, I, hard to explain. So I, I hope it comes out in the videos. I can't wait to see how those turn out. No pressure, Remy. Yeah. My scape needed some help, but uh, I just feel like everything was kind of rushed that night. I think with the freshwater scapers, it's almost like watching them put together, like putting a, like a florist putting together a bouquet of flowers, yeah. especially when they're working with the driftwood. Uh, I just, I, I don't know. I, I got to get a freshwater tank just because I love all the different textures that you can have. And I know that we've got... You know, we've got the Tonga branch and all that, you know, as far as rocks go. And most of that's all, it's covered by coral eventually anyway, so it's not a huge deal. Um, but a lot of the freshwater scapes are, you know, they're mainly featuring the driftwood or the plants. And then there's some fish in there. So, um, 
but yeah, it was it was fun to watch them. It's always fun to watch uh, freshwater tanks be skated, and, and some of the um, there's a couple like aquascapers that were up there in ranks in the world there, yeah. and watching them go, man, uh, it just <laughs> I'm just <laughs> I feel like I'm just playing with rocks at the end of the day whenever I'm skating a saltwater tank, just stacking them up on top of each other. Like I feel like a four year old in comparison. <laughs> Yeah, freshwater is actually but, a lot of fun. It's um and there's a lot of creativity in that realm that I I mean we've talked about on retherapy in the past of like we don't really pick up on that on the reef keeping side, you know? I mean, uh I think Sensky and those guys like some of I've seen examples of their reef displays um and they're beautiful, right? But you don't you, you go on like the forums and stuff and you know, there was the negative aquascape stuff, the NSA stuff that got popular for a little bit. But once you started piling corals on it and stuff, I don't know. I, I didn't think it looked very aesthetically pleasing, personally speaking. Um, but, yeah, you go into the freshwater world and it's just uh, – I did a cube one, um, a few years ago. It was the same time we had that damn bearded dragon because it, like, was sitting where my big 225-gallon reef was, right? Uh, so I couldn't have a big reef tank in that room anymore. And, but I put a little cube freshwater tank in and, um, did it all up with driftwood. And then, um, you know, they have like, uh, Java ferns and Anubias that can grow like epiphytic plants. Like they can grow on the driftwood. So you just super glue them and tie them with like fishing line until they root. And then you can remove all that stuff. So it was really cool because it was like all the plants were actually just growing on the driftwood and there was nothing in the substrate. Um, and yeah, it was just fun, you know, and you, you, you sort of get instant gratification too because uh, you can get decent sized plants. And then the other thing is the plants grow really fast. That's the one annoying thing with freshwater planted is you have to prune them all the time. I mean, you have to go in there with your little scissors and you know, whereas a reef tank, you just kind of let things grow for a while, <laughs> but you also start yeah. with very little coral and it looks, you know, you just pile up purple rocks for like the first year, but yeah, it's, it's fun. I don't know. I think everybody should have a fresh, uh, freshwater tank if they have a saltwater tank, you know, just balance it out in your brain a little bit, you know, that. <laughs> try to get away with it with a macroalgae tank, you know, somewhat yeah. similar. Yeah. Look and feel. <laughs> no, those are too easy. You need something that can frustrate you. So when you get frustrated with the salt water, <laughs> you go and work on your freshwater tank and get frustrated there too. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That, that's the goal. Freshwater tanks don't come with algae, right? So that's good. Yeah. I mean, actually <laughs> there's no it's, algae involved. It's less, I mean, um, high tech planet tanks are hard in my experience. They're a pain in the ass. Um, low tech are great. And that's just where you bring the wattage of the lighting down to, a, um, to an amount that your plants do great, but all of those nuisance algaes that have the ability to grow really fast, microalgaes and stuff like that, they don't do so well because there's not enough light for them to just explode. Um, so it's funny, like get like not ghetto, but like, <laughs> A, a, a crappy planet tank is actually easier than like one with all the bells and whistles where you're pumping in CO2 mm -hmm. and you're dosing nutrients and you've got like, you know, bright ecotech lights on it. It's like, then you're just, you're, you're like, you're playing, you're on a knife edge, you know, of like keeping the plants happy and not having microalgae take a dump. CO2 helps a lot in that regard, but, uh, I don't know. That's just been my experience. Like it's, it's it's kind of funny to like tell somebody from the reef keeping side like you want to spend less money on lights you know like you want to get like really <laughs> shitty lights and then just buy a lot of fast growing plants that are really cheap uh and 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 it'll look great so java fern yeah what anubius oh man sword plants like they they grow like an inch a day or something it's insane <laughs> it's uh yeah, that's, that's what I needed. My living wall. I decided I was going to do a living wall in the office, and I think I've been working on that project for six months now. Do you have like the Kessel spotlights on the ceiling? I have no lights on it, uh, and I have no dirt in it, and no plants in it. 
Oh, yes. This seems to be a running theme with Rob. It's going quite well. <laughs> quite well. <laughs> I uh, did. Jimmy, sorry, go. I said I did put some driftwood in there. So very nice. There's wood. Yes. Gotcha. Um, Jimmy, uh, uh, one of the cameramen that's running around Aquashella and has helped us out a couple times. He also works at a plant store in Seattle. I had no idea. And I, I would imagine this is like every hobby ever, but he says, I was like, what's the average cost of like a house plant these days? And he goes, well, it could be oh. 10 to $27,000. And I was like, $27,000 for a plant. And he's like, yeah, we just shipped one to New York a couple weeks ago. That was 13 grand, 13 yep. grand for a house plant. I told you, you got to, I think it's vice <laughs> that did a special on it, uh, on the house plant craze. And it's yeah. insane. There was like a theft at a California botanical uh, garden museum, whatever. And the plant was like 20 feet up. And they're like, how did they get to it? You yeah. know, in a, in a greenhouse. I get it. was it. like a caper, you know, like they came in and it was, you know, it was like the Thomas Crown Affair. Was that the one where they steal the painting, you know? It was like that. Yeah. Like they stole this like really rare plant. And it's just, it's like. Geez, why are all these hobbies so crazy, you know? Reef keeping included, so. It's insane, yeah. yeah. The funny thing is, like, when you go into a planted freshwater aquarium store, like, man, like, everything's, like, you know, like, our tanks are always, like, mad science projects, you know, with way too much equipment. And then you go in there, and they're, like, you know, they have glass tubes for the canister filters, and then the canister yeah. filter is made out of stainless steel so that it's aesthetically yeah. like, man, they are tricked out. Like the whole, yeah. it's about the whole package, right? I mean, it's whew, pretty cool. Yeah. I love seeing all those, all the footage of, uh, over in Asia of a lot of the, uh, planted tanks and how they're scaped and how they just uh, like you know it could be like a mountainous region or a forest or whatever and it's like the horizon is played with and the backlit uh glass it's just oh it's it's breathtaking but i'm sure there's a whole lot of work that goes into that so i'm sure it looks like that for like five minutes yeah <laughs> <laughs> for the picture for the picture and the little video and then it goes to hell yeah yeah, uh, we did walk around with Chris Meckley, and I think that this is one of the highlights for me <laughs> at Aquashella is, you know, Chris, uh, owner of ACI Aquaculture in Florida, has seen everything. This man has seen everything. And he was telling me that one of the, one of the things that him and Jake used to do at these shows was go around and just, like, point out corals that they've, they've not seen before and color variations or whatever the case may be. And uh, I was a little nervous to ask because I feel like every single frag swap that I've been to over the past year, it's the same stuff. People are carrying the same stuff because that's what sells. And there was, there were three corals that he picked out. And one of them was a bower that had kind of a, had a reddish pink uh, polyp and then a neon green on the side of it, which is kind of not typical uh, in that, in that realm. I know that there's some like marbling patterns that happen in Bowers a lot, uh, but this was separated. So it'll be interesting to see how it grows out. Uh, th that was at zoanthids.com. Brandon from, uh, zoanthids.com had that. I'm sure it was, it carried a hefty price because even Chris was like, I wanted it, but you know, wife won't let me have it. So, um, <laughs> Was the other Come one? on, Amanda, uh, was... give Chris a break. <laughs> give him the coral. <laughs> he might have got a deal on it. He might have got a deal. I don't know. There was also a uh, a Leptoceris that was grafted. It was orange and pink, oh. like or straight up the middle. And um, Jam Jam Corals, I think, was the one that had this. And he said that he just noticed there was one of the yellowish orange Leptos that he had started to streak a little bit and so he just propagated to promote that streak and now he's got a whole bunch of them and those weren't bad i think they were like a 100 bucks i think they yeah. you know we're used to seeing that bright orange the halloween yeah. kind of colored lepto but this was uh this is a really cool <laughs> coral so if you're into like the encrusters man uh that was awesome and then there was a it was not a platy gyra what did he say it was uh um, 
he corrected the <laughs> the shop owner as he does from time <laughs> to time. Uh, I'll think of it, but it had uh, it had green mouths. It had these super deep valleys, and it was a maize coral. You know, just beautiful colors. And I guess this was like one of the first corals to sell at the show. Which is weird because you're normally thinking like acros, torches, mushrooms, like those are the ones that people are after the the rare looking coloration. But um, yeah, this was uh, this was pretty cool. I, I wish I could show you guys pictures right now, but uh, I think Raj, you might have seen some of these. But um, yeah, it was fun to go around with him and just see his picks because he has seen so much. And he's, I was like, is there ever shows that you go to where you know? nothing impresses you and he's like oh yeah oh yeah all the time <laughs> <laughs> what's great about uh, talking corals with chris is the stories right so he can tell you about the time when he collected this or some just story about him and jake or something that jake found that didn't look that great until it grew out and jake had that ability to be able to see these little things that were going to happen uh, with these corals. And so just getting those stories from him are, are so cool. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to try and to get, get him to, to share some of those on reef builders, you know, like put, uh, put the corals down for a minute and write something up and, you know, share, get that, get those, get those stories out there. Yeah. I left for a little bit and people were like, where'd you go? And I said, I was talking to Chris for an hour and a half. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that happened uh, a couple of times, but yeah, no, it was, it was, it was good. It's always good to hear his stories. Cause like, like I, I said, he's seen it all. He's, he's been around it for so long and he's held that farm for so long. So, um, gosh, and he is going to Ghani Astria. Mm. That's what he corrected. Um, he was like, that is not a platy, that is a Ganyastria. And I don't know why that always slips my mind, but it was awesome. It was so cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in the video for Aqua Shell of the like recap video so you'll all get to see it too. But man, what a cool looking coral. And I guess he has some smaller frags. This was uh Tyson Rich, um his shop. So cool of him to share. Any other Aqua Shell highlights, Raj, that you can think of? Gosh, there was so much going on at that show. Um, an insane number of people that was, uh, oh, you know, we, we did get, uh, we did go out, get a quite a lot of, uh, reef therapy fans stop in and yeah, and nice. that, that was cool. That was cool. Getting, getting to see some of these faces and, um, we had a request and we're talking about parameters to actually name like the parameter, like, you know, when we're talking about, um, calcium levels, like actually give the level that we like or you know what they are stay say the numbers well, um, i'd be terrible at that because i <laughs> i don't care <laughs> you know what i mean it's like i don't know it's, i've never been like mm, you know when the calcium's at like 4 30 there's you know magic happens like i don't know i've, I've yeah i don't know when i've tested calcium lately it's been a while so it's it's a process on the hannah checker uh, yeah. and you can do the titration test, but mm -hmm. I, I love doing the Hannah checkers, especially I think nitrate is really easy. Um, phosphate and alkalinity. Those are all super easy tests, but the calcium one is like, it's like six steps or something that <laughs> doesn't really hold my attention that long. So, um, but yeah, like you said, it's, it's, it's not necessarily a specific number, but more of a range that you kind of shoot for. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. That's. I I don't know. I mean, if your nitrates are through the roof, yeah, okay. You know, that's probably not great for your everything. But you'd probably see something wrong by that point. But, uh, you know, when people I see on the videos talking about their nitrates, like, do you prefer 5 ppm or, like, 10 ppm or 15? I'm like, does it matter? Like, I, I don't know, you know. it's uh, Is there really a – I mean, I, you know, I, I've heard people say that they see more color – with slightly higher nitrates and that that makes logical sense right yep. um but uh um i don't know the whole number chasing thing i don't i i i've gotten away with it i guess i i wouldn't say like hey do as i say or anything but it's like i've just gotten away with murder in that department knock on wood <laughs> um yeah 
I have no idea what my alkalinity is right now. I need to go test that because I've, mm. uh, yeah, I, I told myself that like two weeks ago. I'm like, I really need to test my alkalinity because <laughs> I've made some, <laughs> some changes, uh, small changes that I thought, oh, that might, you know, change my demand a little bit. So maybe I should keep an eye on that. And then I just been busy, but. Yeah. yeah. The the only number Jake, that I really liked to target and focus on was pH. Yeah. I, would, I was in that 8.2 to 8.4 range. Like I was, I was up there, but that's where I liked it. That's where I got this phenomenal coral growth. And so I just, I just really chased that number. Um, I didn't, I was lazy about testing, um, calcium and alkalinity and well, pretty much anything else, but yeah, pH is what I concentrated on. Yeah, yeah, that's the one I. I uh, mean, I've already talked about it. You know that on this my smaller tank, I just being a non-number chase. That one's not hard to chase because your Neptune tells you what it is at any ten every twenty seconds, right, or whatever. So it was kind of fun to, you know, go down the the Meckley rabbit hole with that. And yeah, I don't know. You know. It's, it could be all just in my head, you know, like you want to see something, but yeah. everything just looked a hell of a lot happier at that higher pH. So, yeah, I saw the same thing. I'd be yeah. curious to see what your alk is. I, I always was a high alk guy. So, yeah, I'd be curious to see where you're at. I need to test it. Uh, I, yeah, and, and I need to go spend some money that I don't want to spend because uh, I tried to do the Calkster on the big tank it wasn't really hard easy to dial in with the versa so i did talk to meckley mm -hmm. about it a while back and it's like yeah i just need to follow his advice and find somewhere in my basement to put just a giant vat of calc and then just dose it that way um because that i mean we're dosing from a five gallon bucket's working great on the small tank but to find like yeah you could get a brute trash can right but uh i kind of want something that has a flat bottom like something from u.s plastics that's you know 30 gallons polyethylene or whatever with a lid but man that's like four three four hundred bucks delivered to your door freight yeah. uh i don't know if there's a place in atlanta i can buy one but yeah there are if you garage go, can make you one <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i want the mrc i want an mrc calc vat <laughs> <laughs> with cool acrylic colors although i don't is, is calc good on acrylic i don't know <laughs> <laughs> does it make it uh i guess it's, it doesn't um, matter yeah i mean it it does get uh it does calcify yeah. your, your viewing panels so it's kind of a waste um, of money to, <laughs> like to be able to see it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but even those poly tanks now have gone they've gotten more difficult to get it's yeah. almost like these places ran out oh. but um there are a couple of those manufacturers in georgia so you can go pick them up. You can't buy directly from them unless you're buying a lot. Oh, okay. But you can buy from one of these online vendors and just do a local pickup. Oh, okay. I'll have to look into that because the shipping yeah. was, I think, what killed me. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I said, oh, and I'm shipping not doing is through that. the roof lately. I mean, it's yeah. come down a little bit now, but yeah, freight rates are ridiculous and um, everything's late. Uh, the drivers just you know, pull no shows or they show up with full trucks when you've got a truckload of stuff that needs to go out and it's become difficult. Yeah. Yeah. I need to get off my butt and do that just to take it to the next logical step. But then, you know, I'm also going on vacation and I don't want to, you know, yeah, it's like never do anything like, right before you go. Yeah. It's like, okay, from now on I'm dosing from the basement up two stories with this solution <laughs> that is caustic and has a pH of, you know, 11 or 12. It's like, yeah. And then something goes wrong and yeah. Always. Yep. Uh, yeah. I think to wrap up Akrashella talk, it was, yeah, there was, I had a lot of reef therapy comments too. It's weird because none of the trolls actually said anything to my face. Oh, if there shocking. Were any. <laughs> <laughs> uh, every, no, everybody had positive things to say, and uh, I was super appreciative of that. Um, but, Mark, we need to figure out what you're doing for Daytona because I think the people want they want a live version. That and it wouldn't do. just be us three. I feel like there would be, you know, we could we could invite in a whole crew of people to yeah. – 
to debate things I mean, that are controversial in the hobby. Yes. Controversial. I mean, just the, <laughs> the people that were hanging out in the lounge, right? Imagine that we were, we were airing that or we were filming those conversations that were happening right there and then. You'd have yeah. to have the proper level of alcohol consumption because that's what really fuels those lounge conversations. So you'd we, have to we yeah. did have we did have beer. Okay. Thanks to uh thanks to my buddy Mark, Mark Levinson. There you go. All right. <laughs> Put him on a mission, said Mark, I need you to go do a beer run. I think and, we uh, uh, came through. We did a reef therapy at the Aquatic Expo and it was like it was like before lunchtime, you know? <laughs> yeah. And and I remember like we had technical difficulties and I'm like, you know, I need to be like, a, I need that like one beer just to feel relaxed and, but it's not the right time of day. And I don't want anybody to think I'm an alcoholic, you know, where it's like, is he <laughs> drinking a beer at 10 in the morning? You know, um, that was an interesting experience. Cause I, I remember looking up and the whole room was just full and there were like people standing in the back and I'm like you guys are all here to like just listen to me and jake have a conversation it's, it's really weird yeah. like uh, you know I, I mean i enjoyed it and it was cool because there was a q and a at the end and it was really fun to take questions live you know on the spot yeah um but yeah that was uh yeah don't if you do that don't do it at like 10 in the morning you know have it like at like happy hour time like or four o'clock or something Mm-hmm. But just before show closed, November fourth and November fifth, you don't have any children's birthdays on those days, do you? I don't think so. That might be doable. Okay. All right. All right. All right. We'll be back from Australia by then, and maybe other places in the world, and we'll come back with stories of what we've seen. <laughs> It'll be good. <laughs> Remy's gonna come back with an Australian accent. Uh, yeah, I am. A tattoo. <laughs> yep. <laughs> It's funny because <laughs> we've been we've been talking about Reefstock Australia and how uh, Australians are fascinated by American culture, and I feel like I've always been fascinated by Australian culture. Um, I don't know why why that is, but I can't wait to go. I feel like that's like my native homeland for whatever reason. I'm feeling called. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fascinated by people who live in in areas where there's all these things that want to kill you. You know, like South Africans yeah. are like that. Um, Australians, you know, you just think about it like like oh yeah, that that spider that crawls in your shoe, you know, yeah, that thing can kill you. You know, like, it's like okay, um, it's got to smush it before it bite you i guess yeah yeah i have a south african family living across the street from me and if they see like a tiny little snake they just kill it it's awful like i've oh, i've talked damn. to them they're really nice people and i've talked to them I'm like look man just put the snake in my yard you know because it's usually like harmless snakes and stuff and uh but i also you know i try to walk in their shoes i'm like if you grew up in south africa you know you'd probably grow up with a healthy um not fear, but you know, you, you, you were just a healthy intolerance of snakes. Um, <laughs> like I went scuba diving with a bunch of South Africans and, uh, I, you know, did the whole, like, uh, they don't call it like the Australians call it a bar Barbie. The South Africans call it a braai. And, uh, mm. like we're just camping, you know, grilling up a bunch of food. I look like the idiot. I'm not even American. Well, I am an American citizen, but I, you know, I wasn't born and raised here my whole life. So can't really have to use that as an excuse, but I show up with like burgers, which in South Africa is like, what, <laughs> you know, like they have all this <laughs> good meat, you know, and you're like, Oh, it's a barbecue. Like I brought some burger patties and buns and they're just like, Oh my God. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I just tell their stories like, you know, like, oh, yeah, I had a black mamba in the backyard. I'm like, what do you do? And he's like, oh, you know, you just pull out your rifle and you shoot it from your deck. And you're like, <laughs> you imagine your neighbor I'm just good pulling aim. out a rifle and like, oh, hey, Ted, and you know, bam, you just take out a snake. Um, like, yeah, I don't know. We've got some venomous snakes in Georgia, but I don't know. I don't know what's going on in St. Louis, but yeah. Cotton mouth. I think that's maybe the yeah. only one water moxie. we got that copperheads uh t- two of rattlesnakes yeah eastern rattlesnake timber and or cane yeah. break as they call them 
That's the best part about Nextdoor. You guys ever? Oh God, I know oh, we should be talking geez, about reef yes. stuff. The guy that like hates when we don't talk about reef <laughs> stuff. I apologize. <laughs> He's gonna be like at, at uh, fifty nine minutes in, they stop talking about the reef. <laughs> Sorry, uh, but but he's the hero we all need. Yeah, right? that's, yeah, that's he's right. I love like yes. <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll five seconds. I love next door in the summertime because all it turns into a snake identification group. That's all it is. It's like what kind of yep, snake yeah. is this? Is this snake de- like like every post on next door for Georgia is like is this a bad snake? Is this a good snake? <laughs> You're just like and what, just bit. And what I just love bit, will is I that die? The guy that gets frustrated with that, he's like, all right, enough of with with this crap, and then he'll post a picture of an extension cord and be like, is this a good snake <laughs> yeah. or a bad snake? <laughs> <laughs> There was a lady who uh, asked everybody to stop posting pictures of snakes because she has yeah. a phobia. So she's like, so, you know, if I'd appreciate it if everybody would stop posting snakes. And it's like, yes, let's everybody on next door uh, will alter what they post for that one person. <laughs> it was like, right. And the it's posts like, were uh, hilarious. Cause it was like, well, I'm I, I'm traumatized by kittens. If somebody would, you know, if people would just stop <laughs> posting pictures of their cats, I would really Anyway, all right, I'll, I'll yeah. reef talk. Sorry. <laughs> the internet, the internet is just a weird place. It's just so weird. Anyways, um, get to some comments here real quick. Uh, John Farr said, I think I've said it before, but I'll say it again. Reef therapy is one of the best podcasts out there. Woot! I'm only reading this because it's positive. I mean, um, one of the. <laughs> yeah right <laughs> you guys have an awesome chemistry together i think he nails it here with raj is more of the tech and business minded guy but in a humble way i don't know about that <laughs> uh mark is more of the old school frugal simplicity minded one and remy brings a lot of new passion and ideas that's uh that's that's, that's a nice an, comment on, on, it's a good it's yeah. a good way of saying it. remy has no idea what he's talking about <laughs> but he does it with flourish uh Watching these shows makes me feel like I'm lounging around a couple with a couple of reef nerd friends. And I feel like I do agree with that. The thing that, and I said this in the last video that we posted too, there's nobody, uh, there's not a whole lot of people that understand how we talk or what this is. So just hearing it, yeah. I feel like has always been kind of comforting. So I'd listen to this on my way in and out of work and just hearing, you know, Jake and Mark talk about just anything reef related, even if it had nothing to do with me. It just made me feel a little bit uh, at home. Uh, Clarkito says, great show. Was wondering if you guys have any favorite dither fish for reef tanks, mm. pros and cons, and so on. Mm. Are there any, like, typical dither fish? I mean, like, what, cardinal fish are kind of in that category? Chromis, maybe? Um, I know green but I feel chromis like they're would all be the re- obvious choice, but I like um, Cryptera damsels. I probably butchered the oh, genus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I mean, damsels get a really bad rap, right? Or maybe they don't anymore, but back in the day, you know, everybody had the blue devil experience where, you know, <laughs> um, is it Daskalus damsels? I probably got that wrong too, but yeah, like dominoes and those guys, but yeah, yeah. Cresceptera, uh, which would, you know, the, the expensive one would be, uh, the Starkey that I just saw Jeremy do an article on the poor man's resplendent. Um, yellowtail, you know, those are like the, or yep. the Azure, or there's tons of names for them. Um, but I mean, every fish store has them. They're cheap, but they're really bold and will like go out and eat, you know? And so I think if you have mm-hmm. a shy fish, those guys are pretty good to have. Cresceptor, uh, Cresceptor is the, well, the yellow, right? I, well, that's the that's genius. There's the a yellow. bunch of different kinds. Um, uh, yeah. The peaceful bunch. Yeah. Yeah. They're all, I mean, they'll, they'll kind of get, they, they can be kind of pushy with like small fish sometimes or with each other, but it's like, in a in a, I don't know, it's manageable, right? Like there's a little yeah. bit of funkiness to them, but they don't, it's not like, uh, anything to worry. A good example would be like, um, I love orchid dotty backs, right? And they have a little bit of that dotty back attitude, but they're not as bad as, you know most dotty backs that are just you know, <laughs> evil evil fish um <laughs> i had a talbot for a while yeah uh, i think yeah. that's a cresceptor uh, genus it yeah is. yeah yeah uh those are the pink guys right yep yeah all of those are Azure. great man and i mean i think every tank needs them 
they're they're cheap they're extremely colorful for how much they cost they're hardy um yeah uh, that that would be my they're not when i think dither fish in the freshwater realm you think about fish that are schooling or out you know um rainbow fish are very often referred to as dither fish uh i damsels aren't quite like that they do like to poke in and out of holes and stuff but i do think that um if you have a fish that's shy or you know i i've always found that fish that are difficult to get eating they do observe other fish in the tank and and they'll eventually be like oh he's eating that weird poo brown pellet thing okay i'm like let me try to nibble on that too right um yeah. i feel like damsels are great for that so damsels yeah. eat anything um yeah yeah you know what I, I always thought it was a cool fish that you can put in groups um they, they don't really school but they shoal uh and they're pretty inexpensive it's just the uh chalk bass or chalk bass yeah layer. yeah um that's on my list yeah so those did really well for me i, I didn't have great success with the uh, the chromies yeah they would you know once you got them through quarantine you found a good batch that um wasn't nuked it they would pick each other off, right? And you would you would end up with three. No matter how many you started off with, you're going to end up with three. Mm -hmm. And cardinals were like that too. Like they, they're behaviorally, they're cool just because of the way they swim and kind of hover there, but they they blend in and they'll pick each other off until you're you're down to just a, just a few of them. Yeah. The chalk bass yeah, did well for me. You can get a long spine urchin in there. That's always a fun little. Oh, that'd be cool, yeah. So a fun little symbiotic relationship there. Antheus. Um, Antheus are expensive, Z though. I mean, again, yeah. I don't always want to be harping about money, but it's like a school of them is, you know, not cheap. What are they now, like 70 to 100 for the lower end, Antheus? Yeah, especially if you go like the quarantined ones from some of the stores that do, uh, or vendors that do quarantining. Um, yeah, they're pricey. I love what, Antheus. Like the liar tails? Yeah. Really? Does that, 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 I mean, back in the day, that's what I had. It's just a ginormous group of those, and that was amazing. Yeah, I've had they them weren't a that few much. times. I, I've tried Resplendent Antheus, uh, Ignitus. Um, yeah, but Tinka. I sort of have the Chromis effect with them. You know, I'll have a decent school of them for a while, and then eventually, maybe it's I, I don't feed enough. Could be that. Uh, mm. But eventually, like, the population dwindles to just a, a couple. And, and you know, I, once they get down to a small number, then the bullying gets worse. And you find one up in a corner, you know, just <laughs> swimming sideways, like, hiding. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I, I don't have to six, 60 to 100 <clears throat> on those liar tails. Okay. Uh, they're about C 60. Goldie. So, so what? C yeah. Goldie? C Goldie. That's, that's the That's the new name? name. That's the common name. <laughs> I don't know. It just says Sea Goldie here on the on the Google Never search. I searched that. liar tail damsel or uh, liar tail <laughs> Antheus, and uh, that's that's what popped up there. Huh. Uh, zebra bar dartfish. They're okay. Never tried yeah, to the dartfish yeah. or firefish. Um, yeah. They don't really school at all. They just kind of like, like huddle. They, they need ditherfish themselves. Like yeah. they need somebody yeah. to like let them know it's all, all, all going to be okay. Like they're the most scaredy <laughs> yeah. catfish in the world. <laughs> they jump. Big yeah, time I think the very the very premise of a dither fish in a reef tank is difficult too because I mean most of these fish are ducking in and out of the reef all day anyway, so they're you know going in into the coral and into the nooks and crannies and things like that, but um let's see here steve says random environmentalist salesman guest gets the stage for minutes on episode 66 tf did i just watch <laughs> i don't know if he did he listen like we we're just we're that, he's talking about jeff turner yeah. we were talking oh, about the fwc i didn't stuff. even know what he was talking like, about at first i'm like what yeah, he was educating on what happened at the FWC event. So I don't, I don't really understand so what that he's comment the is. Environmental sales guy, I guess. Huh. I mean, I think he does sell. Uh, he does I mean, sell stuff. He sells but... stuff. I think he sold a couple <laughs> of products here and there, but yeah, he didn't pitch anything. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, Tim says, I hope that was beneficial for those that did listen. I hope that was beneficial. Um, Which I just saw for clearing an some update of that, FWC that Rubio up. reintroduced the Lacey Act on the federal stage. So it's like, ah, you know, here we go again. But Yeah. yeah. One thing after another. Yeah. Um, Tim says, the my oldest coral, corals are green star polyps and Kenya tree that came on a rock almost 30 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> Hell yeah. It's GSP. Yep. I actually, I never take that into consideration, but I think that GSP is right up there with some of my oldest coral in my tank. It's, it's the super sexy neon neon one, which I guess is, is okay, but uh, give it a good name. Give it a good name. Yeah. Laser lemon. There it is. Star polyp. hundred dollars a frag. Yeah, I noticed you, uh, Mark, and both Mark and Raj have been uh, commenting back on answering questions. So thanks for doing that. I uh, I intentionally didn't enter some of those into the Reef Therapy podcast because looked like you guys did a pretty good job of answering those on the comment section. So just know that if you have any questions that are just specifically for one of us, uh, we're all kind of we're all kind of watching those. Um, let's wrap up with with uh, grafted stuff with uh, fused things. Um, Somebody did call us out or in the video and said that it can't be grafted because you're not surgically putting the two pieces together. And I, I guess that's true. Um, but a lot of the man-made stuff where you're actually taking like two monies and letting them grow into each other, I guess that's still, that would still be considered a natural, you know, graft, yeah. which happens in the wild a lot. Um, and I think that's why some of the stuff quote naturally happens is because you get two corals that are close to each other on the reef, and instead of stinging each other and killing each other, they end up just coexisting. So, hmm. uh, did you get a chance to see the video, Mark? I did. It was really well or done. Raj? Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you guys have a favorite in in that uh, video? Uh, um... Not to mow your lawn, but mine was the Satosa, the um, purple, orange, and kind of reddish or greenish Satosa. It was, I, I've seen the orange and pink or orange and red Satosa before, but that third pop with the purple, it was awesome. <laughs> so cool. So cool. And I think Satosa is one of those still kind of affordable corals, especially when it gets, when you're, when you're grafting, you do multiple colors. Yeah. Um, and it's something that is, that is easy to grow. I think for most hobbyists. So I, I'll, I'll, I'll agree with you on that. Just, out of you know asking for a favorite um because i like satosis also in general you know in terms of the monty world they're kind of fun to grow uh, i thought the caps were cool especially the one that was a lot more highlighter green i just i you know once you've grown capricornus a few times you just don't i don't want to grow it anymore <laughs> you know it's like okay uh unless you had like a tank where like that was the focal point or something but um <clears throat> So whereas Satosa, I think, still has a place in my heart of like, oh, yeah, I'll throw a frag of that in a tank, you know? So yeah, um, I the the bird's nest ones, maybe it was my computer screen, but I kind of had a harder time seeing the grafting on those. Yeah. And it could just be, you know, again, like all of this stuff in person looks a hell of a lot better than on a camera, right? So... I, I would I would like to see those in person to just get a better idea of what that looks like because I that could be really interesting. Um, yeah, the bird's nest was it was a little more evident in person, but not by much because okay. you're talking about like that pastel purple and the pastel green, and if you're looking at it, you're like, oh, okay, well that's that's cool, and then it's pointed out to you, and you're like, oh, okay, that's definitely grafted, and that's not supposed to be like that naturally. Um, but uh, that that was the only one that they really got to take, I think, of the bird's nest. The other stuff, like I, the favorite, my favorite one at the end there was of the bird's nest was just the one where they tried to put throw a whole bunch on a frag plug, and it just they all coexisted and didn't sting each other, and there wasn't any uh, there wasn't any death. They just made just a big ball of you know purple, green, and pink <laughs> at the end of the day. <laughs> Which is cool. I feel like, you know, that's kind of what we all want is yeah. not necessarily a whole green coral, but yeah. spiking some color here and there. So, yeah. Yeah. To that point, right. it doesn't always have to be, I mean, he, you know, he was talking about the walling and I'm like, well, 
in a reef tank, that wouldn't be the end of the world because if you can coexist those corals closely together, those strains, and have that color kind of interplay with each other, you know, even if they're playing a little bit of territorial battle, you know, against each other, but it's not, you know, true coral warfare of, you know, I'm going to just nuke you with like a sweeper tentacle or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's, that's actually okay in my book, right? It doesn't have to, if you're in the frag farming or, you know, you've got a frag tank in your house and you want to propagate it for, you know, then, then I see the grafting as being a, a cooler way to go about it. Because you can, you know, like you said, cut out the area where the two colors are really well intertwined and then grow that out and sort of manipulate the pattern a bit. But um, just for your own personal enjoyment, you know, just throwing a bunch of different strains together. I kind of did that with, um, is it Leptastria? Like I just grabbed a few, uh, no, not Leptastria. Yeah. I Leptoceris? Leptastria, like the like kind of like Cyphastria a little bit. Sorry, Cyphastria. Yes, like uh, you know you've got the meteor showers and all that, but like I I took one of the more yellow ones and one of the more orange ones and just kind of said like have fun, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, but yeah, I don't know, it's kind of cool. It was it was a cool video, like it because I didn't really. It, it's something that I'm seeing happening, uh, like the rainbow splice and all of that. But uh, I haven't, you know, I'm like, okay, well, a lot of those corals are out of my price point anyway. Uh, but yep. just seeing, you know, Top Shelf doing further experiments of trying to get, you know, more of that grafting happening in different species and stuff is really neat. So kind of makes you think, like, what's next, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They did mention, uh, Kevin had mentioned while we were there that they're working with a professor at one of the colleges to talk about uh they're testing the dna to see if there is any noticeable change in the dna once the coral is fully grafted and has accepted you know the tissues are accepting of each other and all that and there's no warfare or anything uh it'll be interesting to see what they find he said it probably wouldn't be another like six to eight months before they get any kind of results but I think, you know, a lot of people think that these that these big coral farms like, you know, Top Shelf and Worldwide and all this are just, you know, trying to make as much money as they possibly can. But I really think that it's cool that they're taking it one step uh, above and and actually doing some research because they have so many different types of coral in one spot. And Kevin does make a good point in the video where it's abnormal to have that many different acro species in the same tank yeah. so what is actually happening are they exchanging some sort of protein or something that's in the water that you know makes that green speck appear on the purple coral well, that's i mean and then and that's like you know gfp infections are you know really well documented too right and 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 tanks are perfect for that because it's it's a closed system you know so um yeah, yeah. I think I it's happened even at the studio a few times. Um, there's been like GFP, green fluorescent protein infections in corals and stuff. And all of a sudden there's yep. just like green in a coral. It's like, wait, yep. where the... Yeah. So I yeah, remember the really whole neat. grafting thing. Um, what was it? Justin Grable. He talked about it God, probably yep. like 10 years ago um, and was really geeking out about the possibilities back then. He was trying to kind of isolate those... I don't know, those genes or features or something that he was, he was thinking that, you know, this is the magic or this is the key. And, um, I remember at that point they were, he was going to like make milkshakes, like blend them up with a blender and then feed other corals that blended mixture to see if that huh. would actually, um, like uptake into that coral and it, it would be able to, I don't know, take graft or however absorb these um these traits from these other corals um but I don't, I don't know if he actually got any further with that or not i found his article as i was kind of doing a little bit of research on this justin yeah he writes about fusion and grafting and how there are three different type, types of fusion, and I'll just read them real quick. Isogenic fusion, which is the fusion of coral with genetically identical tissue, uh, such as branches of Acropora fusing into each other. 
allogenic fusion, which is the fusion genetically different corals of the same species, and xenogenic fusion, which is the fusion of entirely different species. This may lead to the formation of entirely new corals, um, which I thought was was kind of cool and breaks it down because, yeah, while we're not like surgically mending tissue together, this is still, I guess, even though you place them close together, the, the two pieces together, there's still a natural fusion that's happening there at some point mm. if it does take. Um, but yeah, it, it, you know, Justin's obviously way ahead of all of us on this, you know, thinking about it back in the day. And uh, he, he had already started experimenting from the looks of this article. I'll yep. link that in the description below if you want to check it out. But then to be uh, super lame on your question, um, my favorite was just the money cap that had the streaks because, uh, yeah. you know, I let my my orange money and green money grow together just to kind of see, will they intertwine? Will they, will something happen? And yeah, they grew together, but nothing really cool happened. And so I was super disappointed. Um, so seeing the streaking come through, I, I thought that was cool. Yeah. Yeah. The small frag that he showed of the fruity splice was impressive. <laughs> like when he showed the, the fruity splice colony where it was just, you know, there's some green and some purple kind of intertwined on the actual colony. And you, if you look very closely at the tips, you can see some swirling there. But when he showed that frag, wow. That swirling thing, on the tip is where it's at. Is, <laughs> 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 Heard that about you. <laughs> this is what you mean about like reef keeping conversations and, you know, it's only other reefers understand or <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this is what happens when you drink this low calorie easy IPA crap <laughs> yeah. this is awful Can you imagine being like a business traveler at an airport in a city that just had like a reef conference like an aquashella and like at the airport <laughs> bar you know it's like swirly tips is where it's at man and it's like the guy's just like <laughs> You know, <laughs> that hap that has to happen. Right. I mean, we were at the the hotel bar, the, yeah. the Hilton for Aquashella, and our our like vendor VIP party or whatever let out all at the same time, and this mass of of coral nerds just kind of <laughs> migrated to the to the hotel bar where there was already a population of people, and I'm sure that some of this conversation <laughs> snuck its way in, and they're just looking at us like, what is that? So, um, but yeah, what was that? Uh, there was like a meme about, um, having your coworker come to work and just saying like, uh, my clown just spawned or something like that. Or was it? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, would be terrifying if you didn't know your coworker was into fish, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Just... Uh, fun side story. I was at my, um, uh, I was at my work gym and I got to talking to this guy who is a um, geologist for one of the coal companies that's in our complex. And, you know, I was kind of bending his ear and asking him about, you know, ribbons and things like that, you know, where they find the coal, where he's at, like where it, he's a, he's an office geologist, I guess. Now he's progressed to that level where he doesn't have to go out in the field as much. <laughs> Um, but he's like, I told him about my hobby and I'm growing coral in the basement and all this stuff. And he's like, you know, I've got a friend who, uh, is into saltwater tanks. And I go, oh yeah, uh, you should ask him if you ever, if he's ever heard about the, the reef builders channel or reef therapy podcast. And he goes, well, oh, what's that? And I was like, well, that's, you know, it's kind of one of the biggest, uh, for any information on YouTube. And he goes, okay, I'll go ask him. And then today he stopped me and he was like, yeah, he knows who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we are a small population of people. So I'm, I'm sure it's possible we even met at one point because he's in St. Louis. So I'm totally possible that we've, you know, run into each other at a coral shop at one point or another. But yeah, um, I had a uh, conversation with a friend today um, about our merch as that's what she does professionally. And so I had to explain to her what Reef Builders does and what Reef Therapy is. And I swear, I told her like 10 times. She's like, <laughs> what now? I don't get it. And you, you guys just, you just talk. I was like, yeah. And like, you invite people on. I'm like, no, we just, we just talk. And we're talking about fish and coral. And then we go off on random tangents. And she looks at me and she's like, 
and and how does this relate to business? Like, I don't get it. <laughs> and then the whole reef builders thing, she's like, wait, so people come to read about fish and corals? Like, yeah, people read <laughs> oh. about that. It's like, okay. <laughs> I've, I've had two um, interesting encounters reef related. One is uh, my FedEx guy is a reef hobbyist. And so, you know, he'd see the package of coral or fish and be like, oh, you got a reef tank? And that went on for like a year. And then reef therapy started. And, you know, I would still buy corals here and there on occasion. And and then, it's like, he, you know, he'd talk about his reef tank and stuff. But like when reef builders, reef therapy never came up. And then one day, like, the doorbell rang. And normally, you know, these, like, UPS or whatever, they just leave the package because they're on a tight schedule. And he's still standing there and I like open the door. He's like, you didn't tell me you were like part of reef builders. And I was like, well, I didn't, I mean, I wasn't going to like toot my own horn. Like, Oh, by the way, you know? And, and then, uh, it was like, you know, I, I mentioned all the yard stuff we're doing in the backyard and I had a guy come out to give a quote for maybe putting in, um, a dry Creek bed for drainage stuff. And I had, you know, to help the water, oops, sorry, to help the water go in the right direction, I'd already started using rocks, you know, to kind of berm the area up. And some of those rocks are just like old ass pieces of live rock that I threw in the backyard, right? <laughs> so I'm showing them like, yeah, you know, I was wondering like to do this up nicely because as you can tell, it kind of looks like crap, you know, and, and he's like, I know what that is. You know, and he's, like, he's pointing at this dead <laughs> live rock and I'm like, oh yeah, I have an aquarium. He's like, no, I know, I know. <laughs> and he, yeah, so he was a reef hobbyist too, but he had never heard of reef builder. So, um, but yeah, I, you know, this shows you there's still like hobbyists out there. They're like, they're into it, but they're not like, they're like, I'm not getting on social media and stuff like that's, you know, so. yeah, that, that takes a special kind of dork to get <laughs> online and read about fish and then listen about fish and talk about fish and corals. So yeah, we yeah. I think we're a special category. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> I think, uh, sorry, no. go. Mark. Yeah, just, my wife loves to bring it up with our neighbors like oh he's got to go do his podcast you know and then everybody's like you're on a podcast what is this about and you're like it's like uh, you, what you're saying Raj yeah. like I don't want to explain this because you're just going to think I'm even weirder and I don't yeah. I just don't like uh, it's about civil war history like you know like you just want to lie to him like uh yeah it's a podcast about you know uh, cybersecurity, and it's like and like no it's about aquariums well, huh why like what do you what do you talk about you know and well you know it's you know it's, it's like we're not just keeping tetras man you know it's, it's a little more complicated so it's the trials and tribulations well do you yeah, i mean you've got like a quite the get up in the basement there um remy like do you ever have like the non-reef person that just comes over to the house like maybe like one of your kids friends parents come in to pick up the kid from a play date and then they like see the tank and they're always like oh like, it's like, they think it's cool, but they can tell, like, it's at a, like, kind of an intense level, right? It's like, <laughs> yeah. it's be like, uh, oh, you like to brew your own beer. Okay, cool. But if you had, like, a crazy, you know, brew station in your basement, you know, with crazy burners, and, yep. and then they're like, oh, oh, you really, like, you like to, okay, you know, like, I, you get that <laughs> yeah. face of, like, oh, that's a really big tank, and, and there's a lot yeah. of stuff on attached to it, you know? Yeah, I will say that there's probably only two or three people ever that have come down here and actually stood for longer than maybe five to ten minutes and had questions and were, were like, super interested, you know. Mm. I think most people are, like, what? I don't understand. Because I have, I have like, coralline algae all over my frag tank, and it looks like I haven't seen through the glass in that in probably a year, <laughs> totally. Uh, I just let the coralline go. And they just think it's dirty, you know. They just think it's gross. I try to keep these other tanks nice and nice and clean, but they don't know what they're looking at. And I think that that's probably the hardest thing for people is they think they're looking at plants or something, but yeah. it's so much more than that, you know. Yeah, I had a um, uh, ATI Sun Power fixture, like big T five fixture, and the ballast had gone out, and I had it uh, down here, like disassembled and replacing the ballast, and I had. Like three or four HVAC guys were uh, replacing our air conditioner that had died. And uh, I'm just like working from home that day, you know, and um, and I'm just listening to them talk, right? And they're just like, and one of them's like, you see that light? And he's like, yeah. He's like, that, that dude be growing weed somewhere in this house. <laughs> <laughs> and I just laughed like they were convinced somewhere. I just had like a secret, you know, grow operation going on or something. <laughs> 
that was uh, that was the story on my street in my neighborhood when I first moved in, and um, I put up the reef tank, and you know I would leave for work early, I would get home pretty late. They, they nobody had met me. Like they they just they knew somebody lived in that house, and they were hardly there, <laughs> and that the house was glowing. Yeah, and finally. Um, on the weekend when I was there, a neighbor comes over and locks on the door. He's like, Hey man, are you growing in? Are you growing in here? I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> he pokes his head in. He was like, Holy crap. Let me see that. And he tells me the story about how all the neighbors suspected I was just a big drug dealer and the entire house was just filled with weed and it was just a grow <laughs> operation. <laughs> Wouldn't it be pink light at that point? Yeah. Well, you know, it's not like they were experts. Yeah. Yeah. You see that blue glow from that someone's was it. house. It was just, I, see, whenever I drive down the street, just glowing, and then a yeah. dude that's never there. <laughs> or the whenever I see that, I'm like, oh, fellow reef keepers. Yeah. I know yeah. there was like a, a, a house Righteous. in my neighborhood that had like the blue glow coming out of a window, and I was like, just waiting for that opportune moment where the guy, like, I'm walking my dog, and he's on the driveway. I'm like, I need to talk to. I didn't want to ring his doorbell, you know. Like I felt that was kind of creepy. So I was hoping for that natural, and then the guy moved, and you know it was a sad story, and we never he blew it. Yeah. Could so if he's listening, bros, you know we could have been friends. So. <laughs> so that's not creepy at all. No, I <laughs> well, I just wanted to see the tank, right? Like, oh, like yeah, yeah, you know. I, yeah. It's not like we. I wanted to, you know, be his best friend, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, after you found out that he, you were on reef therapy, he might yeah, want yeah, to. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, I can't like sell well, stuff anymore. Like I like I can't go on like the Atlanta Reef Club and like put like a skimmer for sale because it's just it's kind of weird when like the guy shows up at your door and like, "Hey, you're that guy." And you're like, "Oh man, now he knows where I live." Hey, you know? will, will you will you sign my skimmer, no. Mark? <laughs> I haven't gotten to that yet, but thankfully, Daytona, uh, <laughs> Daytona, yes, yes, November fourth, fourth and fifth. Uh, guys, you got anything else you want to talk about? I know we didn't really talk too much about grafting, but if you want to see the video, make sure to go check that out on the Reef Builders YouTube channel. It's up there. Top Shelf Aquatics, always a fun uh, a fun video to see just because they have so much in that spot. So, And a pleasure to visit, by the way, Yeah, as a reef keeper. I don't know if they let everybody back in the farm, or if, if you asked to go back there, but I'd imagine if you're pretty passionate about the Do they still the have hobby, the they might... really cool, like, kind of PVC structure that they're growing stuff on? They were doing, like, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. They they do all of their acro tanks like that. That's really cool. What do they, what do you call it? A candelabra system or something like oh, that? Oh, yeah. Where that they can thing. just yeah. pull pull the frags out so they don't, you know, they, they have control over them, how close they grow together, and then them not encrusting down onto the PVC. They can get that they can get to that before it happens. But Very nice. uh I'm excited for a video that we have with Taras who he 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 shows all the phytoplankton. He shows that they're they've got an Aptasia farm there now because they're they're doing Bergia. He's got rotifer cultures, he's got pod wow. cultures, all the things. So it's it's really cool. Yeah. I'm happy they brought him on board because they've got a whole nother, you know, micro fauna little area for him to play around in now so and for those that liked his talk at uh reef stock he's going to be writing articles for us nice um and so we should have one published here pretty soon yeah yeah dude's super interesting he, he knows is. his stuff that yeah. is for sure uh gets hype about all the florida birds and snakes <laughs> that's the best <laughs> <laughs> uh I think he's got a running list of how many birds he's seen, uh, native F Florida bird species so far on his Facebook page, if you follow him. But, yeah, he's he's a great time. Anything else you guys want to talk about before we, before we get out for the night mm. or the day or whenever this podcast finds you? Yeah, I'm good. Good. All good? All right. Well, uh, thanks for joining us on another Reef Therapy podcast. Any questions, comments, concerns, anything you thought we talked about uh, that you have questions on, you can always leave that in the comment section below. If you're on YouTube, come find the YouTube if you're just listening to the audio version of this. And uh, we will see you in the next one. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Bye, guys.